Hey, Lucas here for Hanabi Glass. Today, I'm going to show you how to do another version, colored tubing. This is pretty good for making something you're going to work a lot with glass. And anyway, let's get going. So here's what we're going to make. And here are the tools we're going to use. A paddle, a large reamer, a small reamer, you can get away with just the small reamer, some tweezers, and the scoring tool. I like these, but if you have a just plain hand scoring tool, they work well. Some rubber bands, a lighter, and not pictured something to cut the rubber bands with. And here's the glass we're gonna use. Low handle, this one's 12 millimeter, a 10 millimeter rod. Make sure it's clean on the end. The color you want to make into a colored tube, this one is GA's Tonic and some four millimeter rod. I recommend for your color that you use the seven millimeter one from Glass Alchemy. It seems to work the best for the right size here. Too small and everything won't wrap around as well as I'd like it to. And too wide and it'll be a little bit, it won't sit as well on to the 10 millimeter rod. All right, so I'm balancing it to find halfway point. I'm gonna score it, snap it in half. I'll do this uh, enough to have eight pieces. So, if you happen to want to make a lot more tube, you can do this exact same technique and just cut two full rods into four pieces each, and you'll get your eight pieces. It does actually make it quite easy, but you may not need that much too, so I'm doing it with just a single rod to show you. All right, now that we've got it all cut up, you can get your other rubber bands ready, line up all the pieces in whatever hand you want to do it. And then you're going to wrap it right around the rod and wrap some rubber bands around there. You're going to do enough to hold it in place, but you don't want to have the clear or the colored glass all the way over the rubber band that you have on the 10 millimeter rod, that's just sort of a backstop for you. And since we're doing a such small, or I guess you say short version of this, make sure that your rubber bands are a lot farther back than I did it on this part. I ended up having to redo the rubber bands between the shoots. So if it gets too hot, it'll actually pop them off. And yeah, you don't want that. Okay, so we're going to start out first by flaring open our blow handle, which will be much nicer than trying to do it beforehand because it'll already be hot. It'll take less time to get it molten. And then we are going to heat up the end of the colored glass, which we'll do in just a second.
when flaring these open, I like to flare it just a little bit bigger than the size of all of the colored rods so that I can melt it down and let it get a little bit thicker, which will give me more clear glass to work with. All right, grab the 10 mil with all the colored glass on it and try to just keep the heat on the edge. You don't want it to go across and hit the rubber bands because like I said before, they can pop off and that'll just cause you problems. You don't have to wait for everything to cool down and start all over again. So make sure everything is nice and molten before you push your blow handle onto it. I'm gonna switch off the outside flame and just go to my central flame and make sure I get it melted in nicely. Not completely melted in, but enough that it'll be a lot less stress. All right, so now you gotta let it cool down enough, not enough that it'll have any problems, but enough that you can cut off the rubber bands. I'm gonna use just some snips and we'll warm it up just a little bit on the back and we'll, you'll notice I keep warming up the backside that way, you don't have to worry about any cracking. Just getting everything a little bit more evened out right here. It was a little off center and it just makes life a lot easier. All right, now I'm going to turn on the outside fire and really heat up the front of it. And we'll be grabbing the paddle quite a bit to help push everything together. And just every once in a while, just sort of flash the backside through the flame to make sure everything stays nice and warm but not warm enough that it caused everything to separate. That's the one difficult part of this technique is not having the color rods move around on you. Now grab your four millimeter rod and you're going to close up the end of it. Remember though, that in between those rods is still actually separate. So we're going to have to take time to melt everything together. I'll be doing a little bit of twists here and there to allow the molten glass to tag on itself. So grab your punty, attach it to the tip. And now we're going to heat up the whole piece and trying to get everything to melt together evenly. This technique is made much easier if you happen to have an L Marver on your torch. I don't currently have one, but what you can do is that if you, once you get it hot like this, you just bring it back and Marver it on the L. And it'll cut probably about 10 minutes off of your time because you're just going to be pushing everything together. Right there, I'm going to use my pad. That helps a bit, but the L Marver really does a much better job.
and I'll use my paddle to help push things in. And again, an L Marver would make this much faster. I just have to keep doing it and melting until all of it has touched and there's no holes for air to escape. So just be patient. As you can see, that blew up really nicely. So at this point, I'd managed to get all of the little holes melted in. And from here on out, the entire process is just going to be letting it get thick and evening out the entire diameter of the tube so that all of the walls have the same thickness.
Now the wall thickness is pretty even throughout the whole piece. I'm just going to stretch it back down because I don't really need a giant bubble and it'll be easier to pull smaller pieces off of it after it's been stretched to about maybe around 22 millimeters. And we're done. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the button so you can get all of our new content. Drop on over by Instagram. Check out our feed there. As well as I'm streaming three times a week on Twitch. And you can go check out my channel for the times I have scheduled. And if you have any questions, videos, or just want to chat, drop on by to our Discord and leave us a message. And last but not least, drop on by to our website to check out all the new available work. Thanks for watching.